on a world tour, we traveling four doors, flight to four fours, to a country conversation over a four course, this is final destination, welcome aboard, in this edition the mission is no different than it's been in the past, we play the music, make the music, take them with us and let them know they can do it, you hear that, it's a world out there, that's why we share that. I'm DJ Jazzy Jeff, and this is Vinyl Destination. Berlin, Ableton, Loop, don't trip. in summer <laughs> him, uh, this the, we recorded that the very first year that the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was on and he left to go to Los Angeles and anybody who's been to Los Angeles you know the weather is warm all the time um, but anybody who lives in a place that has four seasons you know the feeling that you get of the four seasons you know when springtime comes the flower <laughs> You know, the, the flowers come and everybody you haven't seen all winter looks different. You know, <laughs> the girls look better. You know, you either gain weight or lost weight. Um, and just that feeling that you get at going from the spring into the summer. Um, and he was really missing Philly. So he called and... And he was just kind of like, hey, what's going on? And I had to give him the rundown. Oh, man, I just washed my car and just went for a ride. <laughs> the music. And oh, you know, you know, Susan? Oh, my God, she looks so good right now. <laughs> and it really, it, you know, he missed it. And, you know, that's what made him write it. Just from, you know, not being able to experience the, the change of the season. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the one thing that I, that, that I, I loved is we never had any constraints in making music. You know, the, we would always say um, the hardest part for us making any kind of music was coming up with a concept. Once we came up with a concept, we could do the song in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's just the idea of the song was more important than anything. And that sparked the idea. And then everything just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't. I, I, you know, there was no way in the world to think that 30 years later you would be sitting in the studio in Berlin listening to the same song, <laughs> explaining it, you know, when you make it, you know, that, you know, that's the, the cool thing about music is you don't know, you don't know the, the lifespan of it. You know, I think as, as a musician and a producer, you know, the, one of the things that you hope for is to have something that stands the test of time. You know, so to be blessed to have a record that is kind of like, okay, here it is again. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, you never get used to that. Mm -hmm. Right. When you, I mean, when you did the song, you've already been doing music, the two of you together, but mm -hmm. also you and your own uh, for years uh, before. But when you did this, did you immediately know this is something special? Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you don't always know that. You know, I don't think I knew that for anything we've ever done but that. And, and I think just because it was made in the springtime, it was going to be released right before the summer came out. And it, it just it, felt right. For anything, we, we thought that this is going to be great for the summer. It might be over after the summer, but it'll be great for the summer. Right. <laughs> My older brother is a huge hip hop head, and that's where I get all my hip hop from. Um, he bought the cassette when it came out. And we played it during the summer, and uh, I never forget it because it just sounds so clean. Yeah, that's the most important part of it. It just sounds so clean, and it was something fresh and new. You know, I, I you know grew up with listening to Snoop Dogg and all that. When that when I heard that, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. this is something you yeah. always remember. So, uh, yeah, third and fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I played that track in the, in the club, 
already was teaching professional back then and we, you hammered it three, three times a night you played it with the original mm. <laughs> then later when uh, Miles Davis did the uh, doo-wop song was based yep. from the same sample they did, did get it out again and jug it around with it and yeah. stuff like that they, they started off by playing some of uh, the sample from Summertime, which is Summer Madness. When cool in the Gang, when the Summertime had Jeff explain the record and would influence the record. And then the dope part is that we played records from a few people in here and everybody just kind of gave their thoughts on what the records were and, 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 they, and they told the backstory about how they created it. So it was really dope to see other people make, uh, to see it and listen to other people's music and, and see the diversity of the people I hear. Is, is, is awesome. It was dope. Inspirational. Yesterday we came in, got a chance to see uh, a great panel with my main man, the legendary No ID. Um, we got a chance to have a jam session with a bunch of producers, and we also had a great listening session with some up-and-coming producers, singer songwriters. So today is day two of Ableton Loop. We have a producers panel today, and we have a panel moderated by my good friend Jesse Terry of Ableton. A one on one conversation with yours true. How much did the CD cost? Uh, well, the CD cost $10. And I said, $10. Well, how much is the t shirt? Well, I said, $25, $30. Well, how much is the shirt? How much is the t shirt? $25, He said, Why don't you give a CD to everybody who buys a t shirt? He said, You make more money, and everybody thinks it's cooler to buy a t shirt than music. And I sat there, and I said, shh. <laughs> <laughs> that was the smartest sh anybody could say. Like, I was tripping. I was like, like, I'm looking at him like, what? And he said, his first five projects he put out for free. Because what he felt was more important was developing his fan base than making money off of the music. Because once you get a fan base, They'll buy your underwear. <laughs> they won't just buy your music. They'll buy your concert tickets. They'll buy your underwear. They'll buy shoelaces. If they're a fan, they buy everything. He's like, you're so focused on selling this one piece of music instead of bringing people and buying a piece of yourself. And he left, and I completely changed my outlook on the way things were because I understood why that generation thought that today's music industry is the greatest shit ever. And I was like, I'm tripping. <laughs> Very insightful. <laughs> so I'm on you know, you know, I'm you, you know I know already. I know. And then you're going to remember and be like, I know, I know. Yeah, my shit did. Let me yep. tell you what I told Dre. I was with Dre, Dr. Dre. So we was talking and I was like, hey man, uh, because I had the studio that he got. It was his studio. He left it. I had it. And then he came back. So I was looking around. He renovated it. And um, I was telling him how I've been, like, mic and stuff and all this analog stuff. He's like, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I used to do that early on because I ain't have no um, a lot of keyboards, so I had to make things sound different. And I was like, yeah, and you stopped. And he was looking at me like, what <laughs> do that mean? I was like... Man, but I'm going to tell you like I told all my friends, all your best music was not in the computer. Yep. I hate this. <laughs> He's like, you just f***ing me up. Yep. Like, I'm trying to prove you wrong. I was like. You can't. All your best wasn't in the computer. All of it. All, all of, of it. your best shit, All of it. Was not in the computer. It was through that board and to something else. And this is okay, man. Cool. Don't hook it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, man. You know, Geneva back home. 
He don't he don't wanna revisit that. Yeah. Well that, you know that what that it was of time when that music was <laughs> you know what it was. You just started something, man. You know, you know. Listen, I'm already buying all these old keyboards and <laughs> yeah, and to run and then to run them directly you... into the computer. <laughs> See. <laughs> See, man, listen. Before I moved, oh, I had, I had the best of both worlds. I had my mm -hmm. two inch in my room. I had my knee, I had my power, like, I had the best mm. of both worlds. And I just, I, listen. Tell him what you want to do with the two inch. Shut up. No, I ain't going to tell him that. <laughs> he wanted to turn a two inch into a refrigerator. <laughs> I'm not going to even. <laughs> I'm just, your best, listen. I know. If you got two skillets, one's iron and one is stainless steel, and your best food is on the iron skillet, and you don't like washing it. <laughs> <laughs> you just gonna eat bad food or so so food, not bad food. Just cause you don't wanna watch set up a sit you could set up the playlist retreat, you could set up all this stuff and you can't wash the skillet. <laughs> right. He's right. I know he's right. I know he's right. That's why everybody that's like, yo, let me buy your knee. And I'm like, no. But it just sits. The frame is over here. Put it all of the together. modules. That ain't nothing. That ain't nothing to do. And, oh, man. Man. I'm not even going to tell you that the last eight channels are stereo channels. Uh, listen, you can sell it to me. <laughs> I help you out. You can get some more VSTs. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> Buy some more sounds. Because <laughs> you know the only reason why you want all them drum sounds, right? Because you ain't running them through the analog. I know. As soon as you run them same sounds yep. through the analog, you're not going to be looking for no sounds. You're mm -hmm. only looking for sounds that's been run through the analog at some point. All right, man. I'm done with this <laughs> 